resources in coastal East Africa and looking at um, the current status and strategies for sustainable management. By way of outline, I uh, will mainly look at uh, the background to the research, look at the groundwater resources very briefly, highlight the challenges and strategies and conclude very quickly. From the slide, um, you can see water is an issue in coastal East Africa. The slide on top look, looks at a water point in Comoros. And at the bottom there, you can see another slide. This is from Kilifi in Kenya, showing actually the challenge of uh, very dirty water from an open spring. And of course, in the other issue, there is water, but again, too many people for little water. The key issues that we have um, noted during our research were mainly the increased uh, groundwater abstraction, and of course this is linked to the rapid population growth. We also have issues where the supply, supply wells are very saline, often exceeding the WHO standard um, in terms of salinity level. Of course we have issues of well contamination, again linked to what kind of wells, where are they situated, and the environment surrounding them. We've noted that there's an inadequate transfer in the knowledge between we researchers and of course the end users, who are mainly the communities, the water user groups, and so on. And then the issue of salt water, seawater, and uh, salt um, intrusion in, from the seawater is also a key issue and it's enhanced by climate change. And lastly, especially for coastal East Africa, we have low recharge because of the changes in the precipitation and the temperature, again linked to climate change. Uh, in our research, we mainly looked at um, three main areas in the Comoros Island, the uh, Kilifi area in Kenya, and Kilwa in Tanzania. Just by way of introduction, we noticed that in the three sites, um, there are similarities in the kind of wells they have. Uh, Comoros may be slightly different. We can see on the top left corner the, a new well in an, a recent lava flow. The conventional hand-operated uh, well borehole in Kilifi is very similar to that in Kilwa, Tanzania. And again, the open wells are quite similar in uh, the two, two areas. In terms of what kind of wells you find on the ground, some may be open, some are covered, um, some are partially covered, some are in the residential areas. Um, just looking at this slide, you realize that there are issues of contamination because the water is not well protected. So what are the challenges that we want to highlight today? The first, as we've already said, is the water quality and related contamination due to unprotected wells, sometimes unregulated dumping of waste in the well area. There are issues relating to infrastructure, uh, where you have wells that have been broken down, they're abandoned, they're dry, and of course that has an impact on the accessibility of water. We have issues relating to water shortages, particularly in dry season, but again, issues that can be linked to water points, time taken to fetch water, how long do uh, the water, water people take to get the water. We have issues that we can talk about regarding governance of water in terms of unequal resource allocation, uh, the fact that there is actually lack of discussion about what alternative sources of water, and then, of course, technology transfer. And increasingly, we are replacing the traditional knowledge system with modern technologies, often assuming that the traditional knowledge is out of date. Some slides here of very contaminated water, but in use, um, you can see the slides on top, very open wells, flooded, but in use. And at the bottom there, wells that are drying up, some, even though they are um, uh, well lined, again, they are too shallow and fast susceptible to contamination. 
Uh, speaking to community members, and here this slide just looks at Kilwa in Tanzania and Kiliti in Kenya, you realize that there are similarities in the water problem in the two areas. For example, um, key among these are water scarcity, increased water salinity, high cost of water, poor water quality. Those issues are common. Where there is water, you realize here that there's issues of water rationing. In Kilifi, this is quite high at 42%, as you can see on the graph. And then also water rationing and, of course, disconnection. In um, Kilo, on the other hand, the shortages of water due to electricity blackout are more common in this particular instance. And what are the causes of these problems according to the community members? Again, um, just looking at Kilwa in Tanzania and Kiliti in Kenya, you can see the higher percentages and also the common issues. We can see, for example, in Kenya, they relate to drought and lack of rainfall at 24.7%. Although for Tanzania, old water infrastructure in Kilwa is seen by the community members as the main cause. But of course, drought and lack of rainfall is also indicated there at 6.6%. Others that are very key and, and um, similar include poor water sector management, increased population, weather changes, which again can be linked to the drought and lack of rainfall, electricity and power blackouts. Again, communities have noted that there is some seawater intrusion into the boreholes and wells and then issues related to there are very few wells and again contamination, sometimes contamination because of storage. Others may seem insignificant, but again they are important, including a huge water debt, lack of storage facilities, lack of treatment, and even distribution of water, pipe blockages, which can again be related to the breakage of pipes that is at 6.2%. This slide just shows us um, uh, the issue related to inaccessibility of water. Often you find some hand-operated boreholes have been established in areas, but then they break down and the knowledge transfer of maintenance perhaps has not been done adequately so that the main user, usually the women, are aware and can uh, fix them. Often you find wells which have been sunk, a lot of um, investment, and they are dry in the end, or sometimes they are saline. And the community is really frustrated on um, issues relating to water. And these are just some of their uh, frustrations. Uh, in the blue box, if you use a white bucket to fetch water from this tap, almost one third of the bucket will have dark red substance. If you use it directly for mopping, for example, the flow and the mop will turn red. Thank God we have not experienced any diseases so far. Our experts are only looking for water and not quality water. Why would they drill salty water if they did their research well? Again, feeling that people are doing research, they have the knowledge, but how come we cannot get boreholes with good safe water? In the past, there were taboos that protected water from depletion and pollution. There is no tradition now but confusion. Many boreholes with plenty of useless water. And in the green box, the government knows that this water is not fit for human use. Before drilling here, water samples were taken to the national chemist. The results of the tests were never reported back. We are testers and we want to tell this government that there is no water fit for human consumption. Even cows do not want it. And so just um, uh, reflecting on what strategies for management, uh, we've just picked six, six here that we can highlight. Uh, we really feel water resources management should be integrated to include water storage, rainwater harvesting, proper use of water, water quality issues, and that must be within an integrated um, resource strategy. Uh, what about proper siting of boreholes, of wells, 
continue on the maintenance of wells. Here again, we feel involvement of women is very key because these are the major stakeholders at the micro level. It's not enough for us to get boreholes and you know uh, close them completely and the spares or the way to fix the people using them do not know. We feel we must integrate traditional knowledge systems with the not modern technology. In our research, particularly for Tanzania and uh, Comoros, the traditional wells were wider and seemed to have better water than the more modern ones. And it seemed the traditional knowledge still works very well in the areas where we did the research. Linking research to practice and involving community members in discussion, this is still very key. Uh, technical decisions should be bottom up by local communities. This is something I think that we have sung about, but hardly implemented to its full force. The awareness and training, microfinance and training, where we've reached so far, we cannot forget microfinance. Um, even when we have NGOs and other uh, organizations and agencies assisting, the stakeholder who is the community member needs to be able now to invest themselves. It could be like in the picture shown here in a, a pumping system with storage tank. All these things need to be part of the strategies for management. So by way of conclusion, I think we really must drum in the issue of the community members. From our research, we noted that community members are aware that the groundwater resources are being depleted. This is not new. They are aware of salinity as a key water quality issue. They are willing and ready to engage in water resources management. And surprisingly, they are willing to pay for water if that water is actually clean, available, accessible, and at the right, uh, at the right price. And then, of course, engagement of both stakeholder and community, as shown in this picture here, where we have uh, one of our focus group discussion. The youth, we feel, need to be increasingly drawn into these discussions so that they take up the new technologies and integrate with the traditional ones. And of course, our continuing research cannot end. We still need to understand even much more on the dynamics of the coastal groundwater. We really want to acknowledge APRO um, that provided us funding through DFID for the Catalyst Grant and the universities that we have worked with, including Sokoeno University, University of Dar es Salaam, Queen's University Belfast, Pwani University, Université d'Avignon, Université de la Réunion, Université de Comoros, and of course, Kinyasha University and each of the community members who have worked with us during this project and uh, were very instrumental. And of course, I thank Scott and the team of casting and all of you for listening to me. Thank you very much.